We recently transitioned a Facebook ad account using multiple campaigns to a single campaign broad targeting, and we went from losing $12,000 a month of profit to making over $35,000 a month in profit by transforming to this structure. I'm gonna show you in this video the exact steps we took so where you can easily follow along and start implementing yourself. Now, if you're questioning why I'm credible to be teaching these types of things, I've done over $50 million in online revenue for my clients. I run a Facebook ads agency that specializes with e-commerce stores. And I also coach and mentor e-com brands as well. And you can click the links below to get more information on those. Have Nick Terrio run your ads or have Nick Terrio mentor for you. Now, before we get started, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and let's dive into this video. So how to transition a Facebook ads account to single campaign broad targeting. Yeah, to single campaign broad targeting. So I just wanna show you guys the numbers really quick for this store, so that way you guys can you know kind of see what I'm seeing as well. So first off, we're gonna be going over scenario two in this particular video. So you know, before we came on board, which was February 1st, we came on board, they were running ads for 12 months you know, prior to us, you know, that average per monthly basis was a 1.43x Facebook ads ROAS. Now that Facebook ads ROAS is the triple well reported Facebook ROAS. That's not the Facebook report ROAS reported within Facebook. Okay. It's the blue attributed ROAS within inside of Facebook. Okay. Um, or within inside of triple well. All right. They were averaging about $36,000 a month in ad spend, uh, 51k a month in revenue specifically from Facebook making literally $36 a month in profit. Uh, with their three month customer LTV, they were making about $6,200 over the next 90 days um, in profit. Okay. Now we came in get on again, February 1st, um, January 1st to January 31st, they were still running the ads themselves. Um, and the month before prior of us coming on board, they had spent 57 K making back negative $12,000 because of the, you know, Ross was so low and after LTV and everything like that, they were losing, you know, you know, they're making back a little bit more to where that 12K turns about a 5K loss over 90 days. Okay. Now, February, we came on board um, from February 1st to February 30th, you know, us running the ads and stuff. We spent 62K, so not much more. But look at the profit difference. Profit difference, we made about 22K in profit. Um, and those 2,074 customers we acquired um, increased in value from 22K to about 36K over 90 days. Um, and then March just looks even better. So I just wanna show you guys everything, the ad account, all that good stuff right there. So first things first is looking at the ad account January 1st through January 31st. You can see they have a ton of shit going on in this ad account. I mean, we have Advantage Plus campaigns, top of funnel, middle of, like literally Black Friday stuff still running in January, which can not necessarily knocking it because I've seen stuff run all the way up to Valentine's Day, for Black Friday and still crush it. So not necessarily knocking it, just variety of different top of funnel, cold, broad, you know, some other Black Friday stuff, just a variety of different shit running in the account. This causes a lot of auction overlap, okay? So for example, if, you know, this single pictures cold broad campaign identifies someone it wants to target, and at the same time as IG Best right here, they're going to compete against each other to place an ad in front of that person, okay? So that's what auction overlap is called. Now, if everything is in this one campaign, Facebook then decides what ad it wants to show in front of this person, and it doesn't have to compete against each other. It's already competing against thousands of other advertisers, millions of other advertisers. Why do you wanna add that extra advertiser in that's gonna compete, okay? It's gonna raise your CPM, it's gonna cost more to reach people, and it's also going to make your ad cost just more costly, which is going to decrease your performance, okay, and your efficiency, okay? So again, in January, they did about a 1.11, uh, 57K in spend, negative 12K loss, um, those thousand customers they acquired increased in value from negative 12K to negative 5K. So they did recoup some of that money, but still a loss, okay? Now, February, when we came in board, this is all we did, all right? We set up our single campaign. We started off at 10% of the daily spend, what we're spending on a daily basis, which was about two, I think we're spending, what, uh, 57K. So we're spending roughly $2,000 a day. Start the campaign at $200 a day on February 1st, and then we started to spend. Okay, now we start increasing this campaign by 20% a day, and I'm gonna show you the setup and all that good stuff in a second. But we start increasing this campaign 20% a day. As we increase the spin on this, we would pull spin from these other campaigns, okay? And just to show you how that campaign set up, we had one main ad set inside of it, targeting broad, and we pulled their six best performing ads by spin. Okay, spend and CPA. Okay, so a lot of people they're like, oh yeah, I pulled my six best performing ads. They'll pull the lowest spending ads with the highest ROAS. That's not correct. I like to look at the ads with the highest spin, and then I like to look at which ones of those highest spins had the best CPA. CPA. Okay, key thing here. 
All right, that's gonna give me what I need for that ad set. And I pulled the top six to, you can you can pull more, honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, I'll, I'll put 12 at a time in there at one point, it doesn't matter, okay? Just it takes a bit longer to run that type of stuff. So now in February, just a recap, all right, we spent $62,000 in February at a 1.94X ROAS, $22,000 in profits, first profitable month in over a year of running Facebook ads, okay? And then those 2,074 customers we acquired in February, we're gonna increase in value to about $36,000, okay? So not only on top of that, they're also gonna increase in value and they're gonna make another $14,000 in profit. So this is good. This is very good signs right here of business growth, okay? Now again, you don't need to be profitable in the first month, okay? That's a big mistake. All right, you don't necessarily need to be profitable in the first month, but every business is built different. I have one of my students who it runs at a $0 profit the first month, okay? First month, all they wanna do is $0, okay? But they have an extremely high 90-day LTV that's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars because their first month, they just want people to get into this particular product, then they upsell them on this other product that's significantly more expensive, okay? Every business is different, that's why you need to know your numbers, okay? Now, let's go to March, all right? So we're gonna go into March. Now this is, again, February, we're transitioning in February. So we're like, it's still kind of some of their spend and kind of our spend, but you can see we spent majority of that spin right there. Okay. Now let's go into March. Okay. Now March, we go ahead and we spend, you know, 30 days more on this particular strategy right here. And you can see right here, we spent a hundred thousand dollars in that one campaign. If you go look back at you know, even January, for example, there's no, like everything's spending like $10,000, 9,000, 3,000, 4,000. There is no campaign that's spending dominant all the spend. Okay. Very interesting there. Now we did do a drop in January and we did run a separate campaign for that drop just so we could try to push that drop as hard as we could just for that short period of time. And we also ran a lead generation campaign for that drop. So it was lead gen campaign. We spent $3,000 to acquire 3,000 emails just to hype up that drop. That's it. Okay. Now let's go to the numbers in March. We did a 1.85 ROAS. Okay, so a lower ROAS, but we spent double, okay, or over double, all right? And we did 35K in profit. We acquired 3,800 new customers to the business, and we had, did a $63,000 90-day LTV, all right? So over 90 days, these 3,000 customers are gonna turn to $63,000, almost $30,000 more in profit, okay? So we're gonna keep spending at this pace. We're gonna keep spending, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a month. And our overall Facebook rise is gonna drop month over month. That's perfectly normal. As you spend more, you have law of diminishing returns. But look at this 90-day LTV. That's what we're growing here. So we're also looking at, all right, cool. Well, what's other ways we can improve things? Now their gross margin is actually really good in this business, 70%. So I'm not, I'm actually really happy with that. But this, this three month LTV is actually pretty bad. Okay. So their AOV is $58 and their three month LTV is $68. Okay. I would like to try to improve the, I would like the 90 day LTV to be above 25% of the AOV. So that'd be about 14.5, 14.5. So I'd like to get this LTV to somewhere around $70 to $75 within that first 90 days right there, okay? That's literally just squeezing out another four to $5, okay? Now think about that. All these 3,891 customers spending, let's just say five more dollars, okay? Five more dollars, that's gonna add $19,000 more in revenue with a 70% or 30% um, gross margin. That's gonna put this somewhere around 65, $67,000 in profit, okay? so. Just giving you guys some examples there. Again, all the action steps we took on this account was we created a single broad prospecting campaign with one ad set times six best performing ads by Smith and CPA. We started the campaign at 10% of daily budget being spent. We started scaling by 20% per day as performance allowed. And then I pulled the same budget. I increased the broad campaign by from the other campaigns. Okay, so for example, if I increase this campaign today by 20%, I go from $500 daily spend to $600. That's a $100 increase, okay? What I'll do is, is I'll pull $100 from other other ad campaigns in the account, which will ultimately scale those campaigns down. So as I'm increasing this campaign, I'm pulling budget from these campaigns, okay? Now, which campaign do you pull budget from? Honestly, you could start off with the least performer and just start pulling budget from there. And then that way you can just start swallowing up these other campaigns to eventually where you just left with this one campaign right here. So, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. That's how we transition from a broad camp, um, you know, from multiple campaigns to a single broad prospecting campaign. 90% of the time it works. There is a percentage of time it doesn't work. Okay. In that particular case, if it doesn't work, what I'll do is, is I'm going to maintain that 10% of daily budget spend to that particular campaign. And I'm just going to hammer creative testing until we find creatives that 
that work on broad targeting and then i'm gonna start scaling it up okay which i'll do another video in the future to kind of handle that right there uh, but just quite frankly we haven't ran into an ad account yet with that problem so um that's the good thing about this strategy so um yeah guys thank you all so much for watching hit the like button hit that subscribe button for new videos every monday wednesday and friday i'll talk to you guys later peace out